All right, welcome party people to another episode of Chronicles of Darkness with our merry monsters. Um, oh, I was supposed to do the whole yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> cast <laughs> monsters. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when Rio doesn't read the script right before we start. <laughs> I just go for it. So, uh, last time stuff happened a lot of stuff actually happened jake do you want to talk about all the stuff that happened do i um you've never done one before this is your rite of passage okay well i mean technically helena hasn't done one either but we're all scared of her so it's fine uh Uh, we came out of owen's world and that's that's how dell understood it as oh this is owen's world but we came out of owen's world the goblin um, market, yeah. The goblin market, thank you. We met with a mysterious woman at Mr. Frosty's, uh, what seems to be the new meeting location for everybody. <laughs> um, Del, you can really go wrong with an extra planar being who makes tasty treats, so. <laughs> I think some people in the room would uh, hesitate to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect way of describing it. Mr. Frosty's was a restaurant owned by an extra planner being. Uh, Solomon met with Angel, who is a assassin hunter, bounty hunter assassin. Uh, yes. To just kind of touch base, it seemed like, I'm, this is all from Dell's perspective, to just kind of touch base and find out that any debts were squared away. Uh, Dell couldn't pin much else because he was just kind of head over heels, eyes or heart slumping out of his eyes. Um, And to clarify, Angel is more of a fixer, not just an assassin. So like if you have a problem, you can go to her and like, I have a problem, fix it. And she'll fix mm -hmm. it. It'll probably involve killing somebody, but she's more of a fixer than just an assassin. Okay. We're we're making character depth here. Yeah. Uh, We met her. Del was introduced for the first time. Uh, Owen and Helena had a bit more conversation with her. Owen actually, because she was talking a lot about price and tabs, and Owen flipped the script, and it was wonderful. That was my high point. Uh, And then Helena turned into a werewolf in the middle of a Chicago street, took off, scared a bunch of people, and then uh, basically sent everybody a mysterious text that said, meet me tonight. Oh, and uh, Britannica and Coulter made a deal with Hunter uh, for uh, uh, Clay's hand in marriage and his sister. Small beans. That was that was a very large plot point that I was absent for. That all of other all of us characters were absent for besides besides Coulter, Coulter's many oh. personalities. And also, Coulter, uh, uh, just a rules clarification going forward. When you make a pact, there has to be a physical piece of paper that is signed. Excellent. Okay. Because, like, technically that piece of paper is, like, the pact. So, like, it can be destroyed, thus nullifying the pact and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, So, I have a question on that. Sure. Does that mean that when I made my pact, there's a physical piece of paper? There is somewhere, yes. (laughs) And is um, it and as vulnerable as actual paper, or do you have? No, to no, no, no. There, there. It's it's much harder to destroy than that. Like, there's usually very specific ways that you can destroy them, and demons guard their contracts like super, super. Like, you'd be hard pressed to even find it for Legion. But I mean, you guys could try. <laughs> um, I yes. will say that in that moment, uh, two things. Uh, I made it to save multiple lives. I just want to say that I didn't. I didn't give away my brother's free will lightly, um, <laughs> and I believe that it was made on a napkin uh, from the diner because that was what was available, and I didn't expect to walk in there to make a deal quite that way. <laughs> also, story clarification: the milkshakes at the diner were fantastic. The best Del, milkshakes you'll ever have. Yeah, Dell drank his, and then when Helena backstabbed him, jumped into the car with Angel, and then sped off. He, out of spite, finished Ruby's drink. (laughs) It wasn't as good as his. 
No, because it was the perfect drink for Ruby, not for you. Yes. It probably tasted of blood and uh, fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he reveled in the fear. <laughs> All right. Not so much. All right, Helena, I'm going to kind of like – let you take it away because I don't really know where we're going or what we're doing. So I know we discussed last time that Mark needed to bring blood. Jake needed to bring earth. Hank needed to bring flesh. And then you said Coulter didn't need to bring anything. Correct. Jack just gets to show up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the location that I have sent you all is deep in the woods outside of Lake Michigan. So I hope you've all given yourself plenty of time to get there. <laughs> um, should we just fast forward to that or do you guys want to talk about traveling? Uh, I'm going to do a quick scene at the apartment um, per our discussion earlier, if that's okay with you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so who's at the apartment? I know Mark was, I know Dell was, and I know... I think all of us Clay were at the We had all gotten back. Yeah. Except for Britannica. Britannica yeah. hadn't gotten back yet. <laughs> or Britannica had left. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, so when we ended, you three were at the apartment, Ruby was off in the woods, and Britannica right. was still in Chicago. <laughs> Correct. Okay. All right, so you hear a thump from the living room floor and you see the coffee table kind of jump a little bit and then you hear a female voice going, you guys didn't move the table again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Sorry, hold on. Move the table. I mean, you think that like an extra dimensional apartment would have better fittings than underneath a coffee table for I our sister. I swear <laughs> Tiana does it to herself so that way she can yell at us. Yeah. As she, as Tiana, your uh, dark complected but pale uh, vampiric sister comes out from her little hidey hole underneath the, the living room rug, she looks at Dell and goes, well, I could have tossed the coffee table across the room. Is that what you would prefer? <laughs> I don't think I said that. <laughs> it just seemed like that's what you were hinting at with me showing restraint and not tossing the coffee table across the room. <laughs> Solomon, do you want a drink? I, I think I need a drink all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. No, we have to get to Ruby's thing. There's no time for drinks. <laughs> we're, we're still waiting for Jack, so we have some time. Tea. She said everyone get there on their own, and Jack's perfectly capable. If anything, Jack could probably just teleport there with his new magic space powers or whatever. <laughs> okay, Solomon um, and I will make it fast, and I pour, like, three shots into each glass. She blurs across the room and is holding the bottle before the liquid can come out. I said we don't have time. Let's go. I just ate four rats in preparation of this evening, so I'd have rosy cheeks and look good in this sweater, so we're going. <laughs> All right. Let's go. I'm going to change leather jackets, and I run to my room real fast to slide open my beautiful closet of leather jacket collections, and I pick out one that's got a few more zippers and looks a little bit meaner. Tiana you know, takes a swig from the bottle while she waits on her fashion-obsessed adopted brother. <laughs> you know, T, we have access to a pretty good deli. You don't have to eat rats. Well, yeah, but I breed them, and then that way it doesn't, you know, it's like equally sourced and, you know. That's so sad. I have You're so breeding rats underneath our coffee table? They're in cages. <laughs> Would you rather me eat people? Because I could eat people. <laughs> no, I really – okay. <laughs> and none of you offer me any blood every day, even though I need it to continue to live. <sighs> Is that why you never want me to make you a Bloody Mary, I say as I'm walking out of my room? I mean, if you made a Bloody Mary, I'd be okay with it. But that's a crime. <laughs> Not – there's a disconnect. Are we heading out? Yes, I've been saying that. I already called an Uber. She, like, holds up her phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you holding us up? Let's go. Uh, you realize we're going to Montana, right? That's going to be a very expensive Uber. Well, I just figured we'd take it to the marina and then take a boat over. Wouldn't that be the fastest way? I suppose. Or Michigan, sorry, Michigan. 
Yeah, Montana's very far away. Very far. <laughs> uh, Lake Michigan still touches Chicago. Yeah. So, right? Okay. That's what I was going to say. So. Mm. Go to Michigan. Mm. Mm. Got it. But I think the Chicago side of Lake Michigan, you would have to cross the lake to get to woods. I think that's... Okay. That much I, I didn't know, so... Mm. I'm not 100% sure on that, and I'm sure people from Chicago, if they ever watch our show, will be like, you guys never been to Chicago. And that is true. Nope. <laughs> well, on that note, do we need to be by water? No, not necessarily. Because if we go south-ish, we can get into some woods, if I remember correctly. But Regardless, we're going to woods. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, we don't need to really... Outside of Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are generic woods somewhere outside of Chicago. We are going to those woods. Generic. Well, Harry Dresden talks about Lake Michigan and woods, so that's how I know. <laughs> well, like, when he goes to the woods, he goes to an island that has woods. So but maybe it's on an island? Anyway, we're going to the woods. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so, okay, so Tiana, Owen, uh, Solomon, and Dell are all hopping in an Uber. We're going to switch over to Britannica real quick. Uh, Jack slash Britannica, you just left the Tasty Freeze shop. Uh, when you feel Mr. a... Uh, oh, did I say Tasty Freeze? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Mr. Frosties. Licensed property. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, so you have just left and you feel like the, the contracts settling in, like they do, you feel like things moving and then suddenly there is a violent shudder and like reality shifts very swiftly and outside of your control and slaps into place. Um, thus granting you all the memories of Tiana. <laughs> Oh no. No 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 and I just take off and then, like a dead run to try to get back to the apartment. And then as you start to run, you see in kind of like hallucinary style because no one else seems to notice, you see Kid Jack leaning against a mailbox, uh closing it as if he just sent a letter and he turns to you and goes, Thanks, buddy, and then disappears. Uh, uh, and just back to the sprint since I can't touch his form. Well, he disappeared, so yeah, <laughs> people turn invisible. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Sorry about my laugh. Uh, anyway, so how are you getting to the woods? Because by the time you get back to the apartment, they've all left. I've already broken enough today, so I'm gonna. I'm going to call a lift. <laughs> uh, to, to Ruby's account, because you're kind of broke. So. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I, will, um, I will lucky break Ruby's password and <laughs> call a lift. Password. <laughs> it's like... Wolves blood zero. No, no, she said the star. password. She said the password <laughs> is password. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was only a venture capitalist. What do I know about password? <laughs> Every time somebody hacked her account, she just ripped their heads off. So people stopped <laughs> doing it. <laughs> it went pretty damn fast. <laughs> She was literally the wolf of Wall Street. Anyway, um, so we will fast forward to you guys arriving at the site that Ruby has prepared. Um, and uh, unless you wanted to do something else, Coulter? Oh, no, I was just going to say I would like, because of all of my like left or right and everything, because I don't know how far ahead of me they are, I beat them there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spend an ether and I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> and the lift driver goes uh we're here <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh the phone still says we have 12 miles to go oh gosh you know 
the cellar with the service out here has been bizarre. I think it has something to do with the winds off the uh, the the lake. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah. How do I get back from here? <laughs> Uh, and so uh, as the rest of the group pulls up, you see Britannica getting out of a lift that then drives off. Uh, Ruby, I owe you 38.14. Wow, that's super cheap for how far that lift Five took star? you. <laughs> uh, but uh, from here on out, Helena, it's all you. The, they've all arrived. I don't know. Okay, so... Um, we are on a bit of a hill, um, but we're in the deep woods and we're in a little bit of a clearing that's on kind of a plateau on the top of this hill. Um, so probably they had to hike to get here from the nearest <laughs> road. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> um, again, do you guys, I don't know if you want to role play that, but it's not. Anyway, you're, you're there. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, there's a big fire and I am standing next to it, kind of make feeding it. And I'm in just probably just my underwear, <laughs> but most of you guys have seen all that. So it's hopefully okay. They've seen um, you naked, Ruby. They've seen you naked so many times. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I'm wearing underwear, apparently. <laughs> Um, Tiana immediately starts removing her clothing. <laughs> I see you guys. I kind of wave you over. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, feel free to get more comfortable if you'd like. Dell takes off his leather jacket and very precisely folds it and then folds it over his arm. And then, like, it's a nice square and he places it down very gently. Okay, nice. I keep all of my clothes on. <laughs> Fiona sits on the leather jacket. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll kind of get off most of what I have on and just get down to like a, a plain white undershirt and plain white boxers. <laughs> boxers or briefs. That's what I always have. <laughs> I'll go down to like underwear, I guess, yeah. Just to make you not feel as awkward. <laughs> Del's going to see everybody else go into underwear, and he's going to try to take off his skinny jeans, but he's going to struggle kind of comically for a second. <laughs> they, like, they stick. You know, getting over the foot is really hard. <laughs> make a dex plus athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> now we're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, okay. Oh wow, he has underwear on under those. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> uh, Surprised. Three successes, one uh, big success. Uh, you make it look effortless. <laughs> <laughs> the Bruce Almighty scene where he. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Now you got your pants off really well, but when we roll for the nuclear codes, we're screwed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the fully clothed Owen and then everyone else in their underwear. <laughs> nice. So we've been through a lot lately or for our entire life. And I think that now that we're in a new city, we really need an edge against all of this bad stuff that we're up against. I think we need to do a pack ritual. I think we need to come together as one. And this won't be the normal kind of werewolf pack that you've heard my mom's complaining about all my life. This is gonna be a pack of equals. And the person that's going to lead us is going to be who is best suited for whatever task is in front of us so that's what I want to do but I only want to do it if you're all on board and we're all committing to work together of course yeah yeah 100%. I okay. can't think of anyone I'd rather work with <laughs> Tiana as you know um we'll just have you be one of our allies within the pack um and Dead flesh, werewolf stuff. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you here and, and good to have you with us. 
Yeah. Okay, everybody has their item, except for you, Jack, that I asked you to bring. Okay. Okay, so I start, I place you guys around the fire. Um, there isn't really a head, but like I'll, if I'm first, then it's going to be Dell, Jack, Owen, and then Clay. And as I got you guys all kind of set up, I'm going to start walking behind you and I'm going to start this, uh, the ritual part. And I, as I speak, my voice becomes really different than what you're used to hearing. There's like a, a bestial quality to it, but it's also like really beautiful and um, strong and you feel it in your bones. Ooh, Farah, ooh, Luna, Urum Jatakis, we humbly request your blessing as we form a new pack. And then I come back to my position around the circle and I said, and I say, under the new moon, I am your Iraka, our assassin. I will provide a shadow within which to hunt. And then I pour some ink into the fire. <laughs> Okay, then I look to Del, and I say, under the crescent moon, Ithaur, our spirit master, will you be the bridge between our pack and the occult? Uh, as she does that, I would like to uh, behold my true form and fluff out my wings and say, yes, of course. Provide us earth on which to race. Mm. Do what? <laughs> Put the earth in the fire. <laughs> and I realize that I have taken off my pants. <laughs> uh, go over to my pants and pull out a vial of dirt with some uh, flower petals on top of it. And I pop it open and dump it into the fire. And then uh, after I after I did mine, and then after he did, the wind is really starting to, to to shake the trees around us, and the fire's kind of moving around. Okay, so now I look to Jack. Uh, under the half moon, Eloda, our judge, <laughs> will you balance the scales? I will. Given I'm not going to throw anything into the fire, I will uh, use my telekinesis to pick up two rocks and to bring them both into balance and say, I will. Excellent. Provide us a howl so we may always find one another. No, no, no. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's wind, fire. <laughs> Uh, okay, now I look to Owen. Under the gibbous moon, Calilith, our visionary, will you guide us? Yes. <laughs> Provide us blood to slake our thirst. I'll open my flask and form the water into a small dagger, and I'll cut my hand over the fire and drip it in. More wind, leaves everywhere. And then I look to Clay. Under the full moon, Rahu, our warrior, will you avenge us? Um, I will. And then I pull out a knife and cut my earlobe off and throw it in the fire. <laughs> Thank you for providing us flesh to to feel to uh, feed our own. <laughs> um. We, and then I turn, I bow to uh, Tiana. I say, we honor our allies who fill in the spaces between phases. And then more fire. I start walking around you guys again. And then I go, the pack will honor the Sisker Da. May Father Wolf run with us. May Luna guide our way. And then as I'm speaking, the, the wind is going crazy. And then all of a sudden as I finish, the wind stops, the fire goes out, and it's totally black. And as your eyes start to adjust, <laughs> the 
you see you are all wolves now. <laughs> and I'm a wolf too, because I've already shifted. Oh, and then I howl. <laughs> Um, I start running into the woods. If you would like to make a roll to determine if you want to not run after me, feel free to do so. <laughs> I don't know what role that would be. <laughs> but you are um, filled with the need to hunt something and run after me into the woods. <laughs> seeing Ruby in wolf form take off, I'm absolutely, like, that's, no hesitation. Go. Same. Same. I want to fight it. I think that's a breaking point for me. Um. Well, you could always make a clarity roll. Okay. I will make a clarity roll. Can I just do this? Is like this is just like a a funny thing that's gonna. It's not like you're always gonna be able to shift into wolves. Like this is just like yeah. a, a an effect of the ritual. Like we have to go hunt something. <laughs> There's successes, so I'm good. And I will also run with them. Yay. Tiana also jumps up and using her vampire speed keeps up with the much faster than human wolves. Um, now, Ruby, you've just completed this, this uh, pack ritual and you've called the hunt and you feel a shift in the energies of the spirit world as something crosses through the gauntlet made by you doing this ritual where you thinned the gauntlet in this area, uh, something starts to come through. Okay. Is it, does it, can I sense like what it is <laughs> or if it's uh, there, malicious or? They're definitely spirits, but it reminds you of the aquarium. There's a wrongness to it. Okay, well, I circle back and head back towards that then. <laughs> uh, just now manifesting from around the fire, kind of like sniffing at it, you see these beings uh, that are mostly see-through. All you can really see of them is hypodermic needles and shards of glass and like slivers of like metal from like aluminum cans as they like almost look like they're like trying to consume some ephemeral thing coming off of the, the fire, like they're feeding on some energy. And as the wolves come back into the clearing, they kind of like turn towards them and let out a keen. And these three beings kind of like rush towards you. Initiative? <laughs> that would be initiatives for everybody. <laughs> Now, keep in mind, in your wolf forms, you will be using your strength plus uh, any brawl dots to use your uh, wolf-ish abilities. That being said, because she is called the hunt, everyone can use Ruby's brawl dots in their wolf form. Thank goodness. <laughs> Ruby, how many dots in brawl do you have? Three. Um, also, I mean, if people would prefer, we can say we hunted um, like a deer, killed it, and now we're coming back. That way everyone can be back in their normal form. <laughs> uh uh, I, I don't agree, but... <laughs> well, I, just, I didn't mean to rope everybody into a real combat <laughs> in wolf form. I just wanted us to go... Oh, this is real doing that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I've hijacked your situation. It's not your fault. <laughs> no um, one will blame you. <laughs> getting into a fight as an actual werewolf after finally solidifying family, Dell has never felt more alive. <laughs> he doesn't know how to howl yet. <laughs> he just kind of barks. He's like, woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> Various <laughs> noises as we were running in the initial hunt. All right. I do, though, still need initiatives from everyone. 14. Seven. Do we add any modifiers to initiative? Why can't I remember right now? 
it, there's a literal mod. spot that says initiative mod on your character sheet. It's, yes, there is down at the bottom. Ooh, uh, 23. Holy shit. Okay. Mm. You rolled what? Mm. How did you get 23? Oh, a, a D10? D10, yeah. Oh, that's not... Okay. Use, use, the, <laughs> use the D&D dice. How very dare you? <laughs> there are uh, no D20s in this world. <laughs> I, you know what? Let me put the bag away. <laughs> uh, that's actually going to be six. Thank you all for keeping me in check. I appreciate all of you. Eleven. Ten. Oh, that's Hunter. That's not the right character sheet at all. <laughs> and when you attack with your teeth, you get an automatic one lethal damage. If you hit. If you hit. Okay. Eight, nine, ten. All right, so at the start of the turn order is Tiana, who uh, you guys are at the edge of this clearing. She blurs and appears from behind one of them and kind of like just digs her bare hands into its back, um, trying to cause damage to it. And that's going to be... It's three successes. So she rips into it, dealing three lethal damage, um, kind of like trying to do the whole werewolf thing, but she doesn't have any claws. So. <laughs> And then after that, uh, it is Owen's turn. Um, I'll run up to the closest one and I'll bite it. Keep in mind, your guys' powers, so like contracts and magic are all possible. It's just if something requires you like do something with hands, you couldn't meet that prerequisite. But otherwise, you still have your powers. So like Hank could cast magic, he just couldn't use any oblations that require speaking or hand gestures i have three three yep uh i forgot to tell you to remove defense um but we'll say you hit so that's going to be four lethal damage as you tear into the flesh of this spirit and you realize in this form that it does have flesh. Whereas like when you fought the glue creatures, I mean the, the goo creatures, like they were a little bit more ephemeral than these things are. Um, so even though it's like translucent, like your wolf jaws tear into spirit flesh and it comes away. Um, that being said, I do need a stamina plus potency roll. Everybody's stamina is plus one in this form. Awesome. <laughs> that is two successes. Okay, so you're fine. But you feel an influence try and invade your mind as you take in the blood of this creature. <coughs> After that, we have Clay. I'm going to attack. Am I removing for defense? Uh, which one are you attacking? How many are there? There's three of them. Um, whatever one has not taken damage yet. Okay, so that one will have four defense then. Um, two successes. Okay, uh, so that will hit, and then you will do an additional lethal damage for a total of three. And are you biting, or are you using claws? Okay. Uh, you bite into this third creature's flesh, kind of like getting behind it and kind of getting it in the back of the thigh. Uh, go ahead and make that stamina plus potency roll. Potency is... Your gnosis. Right, okay. Ooh, that's a lot lower. You do have stamina plus one in your wolf form. 
Thank you. Um, that's zero successes. Okay. Um, so Helena, you can explain to him what this means, but Hank immediately shifts into his. Oh man. <laughs> Taru <laughs> farm. <laughs> Sorry, what? You sh go ahead, Helena. So I say to you, you are close to losing control. Um, okay, so he, on his next turn, will make the roll to determine if he loses control or if he stays in control, right? Yeah. And how many rounds does he have? That's based on his gnosis? Uh, yeah, it would be, his gnosis would be his primal urge. Oh, what's your gnosis? Two. Okay, so then you have two turns to regain control. So you'll have two rolls to do that. Can he still attack before trying to gain control so that at least we get that that benefit? Well, I mean, like, so he, uh, I mean, so he has to stay in that form for a while. Like, so even if he gains control, like, well, I guess he could try and shift back, but it would basically, if he tries to gain control and shift, he would have to use his turn to do so. If he attacks, then he would he would only have that one turn to regain control. Okay. Of the I'm thinking that I'm not super worried about him losing control because we're all in wolf form. Anyway, okay, so I say to you, you are close to losing control. And I I tell you the equivalent of whatever a dice roll would be. So so take a breath, I guess, um, and try to shift into wolf form once you've taken a breath. So he's like, I encourage you to, to, to listen to your breathing and to try and shift back into a regular wolf form, I guess. Because you have turned into a gigantic, huge beast and you're like filled with blood rage now <laughs> so. you must destroy you must kill like it doesn't really matter what but you have to destroy something two questions yeah <laughs> uh a second question depending on the first my next turn can i attempt to do a spell uh not when you're in the blood rage no okay so i would need to all right it's so my turn to shift back and then i can do something okay cool mm -hmm. yeah i think that would be your best bet Rather than trying to attack in Garu, I mean, you're you're really you're much you're stronger now, so you could do more damage. But you only have two two rolls, so I mean, it's up to you. But that's what okay. So I've told you what I've told you. <laughs> uh, that means it's your turn, Ruby. Okay, um, so I will attack the. All three of them have been attacked now, right? Okay, um, whichever one is near uh, Solomon, I think. Near okay. Solomon, I'll attack that one. Okay, so that one does still have defense three because it's only been attacked three. once this round. Okay. <laughs> okay, just one. Okay. So then, then that's two damage. And then you said stamina plus primal? If you're biting, you could also use your claws though. Oh, okay. Um, I probably did use my teeth because I want that automatic one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one extra stamina. And I got two. Okay, so you're good. Jack, what are you doing, buddy? Leo, I, uh, I need hands to do telekinesis, so I'm going to... Um, I'll attack the one that Ruby just attacked. Technically, Britannica is still in this wolf form, so you have a demonic wolf form that you could still access your telekinesis through. Uh, 
I mean, I don't mind just attacking as a wolf. But okay, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, I just think it would be hilarious. Like, the wolf just suddenly grows like this demonic wolf paw that he like picks up rocks and tosses them. <laughs> okay, let's demonic wolf paw this ish. Go pick up a rock. <laughs> uh, so your most like manipulate like so we'll say it's your tail so you're like swishing your tail around and like whipping up stones and tossing them <laughs> um uh three successes all right uh and then that's three lethal on top of that right yeah uh which one were you attacking the one that ruby had just attacked Okay, so that one, uh, the stones that you summon with your uh, demonic wolf tail uh, kind of plow into it and disperse the little bits of glass and everything, and it seems to lose its corporeal form and just fall into a pile that swiftly is evaporating. I do a little, like, (laughs) and turn to the next one. (laughs) (laughs) Del, it's your turn. May I? It says action reflexive. Can I activate my basilisk touch and go for a bite? Yeah. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go for the one that was opposite where Ruby and Jack were going for. Okay. What do I need to do? It's a, You have to touch it, right? Yeah, so I have to succeed on the bite. Okay. So... Uh, so uh, that one still has defense three, so make sure you remove three from that that roll. But okay, and it's stamina plus what again? For what? To see if I attack. Bite. Yeah. Oh, oh no! It'll be your strength uh, okay. plus three from uh, Helena's brawl, unless you have a better brawl. I do not. Okay. So yeah, and then defense good. three, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two successes. One is uh, perfect ten. Uh, so reroll that ten, <laughs> and that's another success. So that's so that's three total successes, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, plus that one lethal. That's four, and then also your basilisk touch now does something, doesn't it? It adds a tilt. Okay. Um, either. Drug tilt or a gray version of the poison tilt, and I get to choose. I think I'm just going to go poison tilt. Okay. I know can what that poison. tilt is. <laughs> okay, cool. It just tells me the page number. Hey, do you have your werewolf book handy, Helena? Yeah. Uh, page 313. <laughs> Poisoned. This tilt applies general sense of being poisoned without worrying about toxicity. A poison is either moderate or grave. It's the grave version. Uh, grave poison ups that to one lethal damage, one point of lethal damage per turn. Um, we don't need the resolve conditions or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. So it takes one lethal damage per turn. Nice. All right, Dell, that was your turn. Now it is their turn. And we have, seeing, defense, we have defense four. Well, the defense would still be based on their individual defenses. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the, the wolf form adds to their defense, does it? it no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hank, what's your defense? Uh, does Garu form adds to defense, doesn't it? Mm-mm. It gives him armor, though, doesn't it? No. In fact, we have armor in this form, but I don't have anything filled in there. So I don't know if it's because we didn't figure that out or... Uh, Do you want to see it? <laughs> that's helpful. I think, I think that's if you had armor from, like, a, a gift or something. Like, it's just so you can list it out. Because you might oh. have a gift that gives you armor in a certain form or something like that. So what's your current defense, Hank? Three. Three? Okay. 
but I mean, strength, dex, and stamina go up. So would that affect his defense? No, because defense is the lowest of your wits or dexterity plus your athletics. So dex goes up one. So the creature whirls around Hank and it sticks these needles and glass shards into you. Um, It immediately deals three lethal damage, but you are also racked with pain. The worst pain ever, like a million paper cuts all at once as your entire body just racks with pain. So I need you to make a resolve roll. Okay, just resolve. Yep, just resolve. Uh, can I send a willpower? Uh, you can, I'm sorry. So it's a supernatural ability, so you can add your potency as well. Okay, that works too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I wouldn't bother writing down that damage though, because you're going to heal it really fast. <laughs> uh, that's three successes, actually. Well, three. Yeah, three successes. Uh, so the lethal damage you had from your previous gunshot wound, though, uh, at the start of your turn, that would have healed, just so you know. Gunshot wound. Yeah, you, and Garu, you fully healed. So. Yeah, you remember you got shot, like, a few episodes back, and there hasn't been enough time for you to heal all of that. Yeah. Shortcut! That's what that was. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I just have three lethal damage right now. So you should have... Yeah, so... Keep that for now. Right. What was your resolve roll? I had three. Success. Three? Yeah. Okay. So you were able to remain conscious as the pain racks your body. Then the other one turns towards Tiana and only gets a chance die because her defense is crazy because she's a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> he does manage to hit, though. Uh, so let's roll her resolve, which is also super high. Ooh, no successes. Uh, Tiana is assaulted by this creature, and she falls back and just screams, writhing on the ground. Like, uh, she has no coherence. She's just laying there screaming in pain as this thing seems to be feeding off of it. Fantastic. And that brings us to her turn, and she's incapacitated, so Owen... (laughs) Two of them left. Any of them look more so hurt than the other? Uh, yeah. The um, uh, the one Dell attacked is the most damaged. Is that the one that's on top of Tiana or the other one? I think that's the one attacking Hank currently. Attacking Hank. Okay. Um, I will. I will kind of stare him down and uh, raise my haunches uh, and I'll cast changeling hours on it and I will freeze all of the items that are inside of him so he can't move. Interesting. Okay. Uh, You make your roll. I feel like this will be a clash of wills or do they get a resistance? I mean, if it's an, if it's just an item. So if I like specify the item, but that's up to you. Well, the items inside of it are part of its body, so okay. it's not actual items. That's why I'm saying like it's cool. somewhere in between. So I'll do a clash of wills. So okay. let's say we'll do your uh, – you're an int-based guy, right? You're mental? Uh, yeah. Uh, but contracts are kind of social, so we'll do your presence – Plus, let's say you're a cult, and then it will resist with resistance. Plus my weird, right? I get whatever my weird is. Yeah. Okay. And then I will do a willpower as well. I don't know if that'll be necessary. (laughs) Uh, One, two, three. Three successes. Yeah, he only got one. So he literally is like stabbing into your brother and then just... Freezes in time. <laughs> then I'll, because I don't really know how to howl yet either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clay, it's time. Okay, so what are my options here? So you can either try and regain control and shift out of Garu form, or you can go to town. And go to town on the thing that just puts. Uh, 
That's attack frustrating. and then try because to... Because my sister is like screaming bloody murder right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know how to choose. Mm-hmm. Mm. My virtue is dedicated, so I'm going to go attack the uh, thing that is attacking my sister. Okay, you have strength plus three in this oh. form. Okay. So when you do your strength plus brawl, you get three more dice. Plus, I believe you add more dice from claws or bite in this form, don't you? Yeah, so teeth and claws are plus two lethal. Okay, so hold on. So I would scratch instead so you don't have to try and not lose control again. I don't know. You're already (laughs) lost control, so maybe, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So wait, we'll we'll say it again? Um, So... So if you don't, if you use your claws, then you don't risk this poison getting in your mouth, but it's already gotten in your mouth. So I don't know that it matters. Does one do more damage than the other? They're both no. plus two. Um, all right, I'm gonna, we're gonna claw that thing. Claw that. Okay, so it's your strength right now, right? Or is it? No, so it's your strength plus three. Plus her holiness brawl. Yes. Which is three. Mm-hmm. How many for defense am I taking away? Uh, this is a new round, so the full four. Four? If you're attacking the one on Tiana, right? Yeah. Okay. Because the frozen one has a zero defense right now, so. Okay. My sister's screaming. Uh, that's three damage. You mean plus three successes? Whatever. Oh, sorry, yeah, three successes plus whatever. Then it'll be an additional two damage from the claws themselves. So Clay pushes himself off of the frozen spirit, uh, his wounds almost immediately healing, which you heal all your lethal, by the way. Yeah. And then leaps over it and tears into the one attacking his sister, uh, digging his claws in and just ripping it in half. Uh, But as you rip it in half, this black smoke enters your lungs. And since you're already semi under its effects, your coat goes from like a pleasant gray to jet black and you start oozing this black goo and your eyes start glowing red and you now know only rage. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Ruby. Okay. Uh, so he's destroyed that one, right? There's, there's only there's the frozen one left. The frozen one. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, Tell the others to head back to the house. I'm going to take Clay, you know, on a run or whatever and try and help him through this time. (laughs) So, Helena, if it informs your decision at all, um, Clay smells like these creatures now, that corruption. Like, he's not just in the death rage. Like, there's something else going on. I mean, I don't know how that would change things. I guess I could tell people, I would tell everybody, you know, I'm worried about him spiritually. But I think you should get to safety and I'll stay with him. Um, Is there any water nearby? Are we near like a river or a lake? Uh, Not close enough to be perceived. (laughs) Uh, I guess I'll I'll telepathically answer back we oh they can all understand you in your wolf form oh okay Uh, I'll say we entered this pack to stay together I don't think it's a good idea for us to leave you now I agree okay All right, so then I guess I coordinate maybe a way for us to, okay, so we need to keep his attention on us. We need to stay in the in this rural area and 
and just hopefully run him out of energy. So, Del, yeah. I'm sorry. Dell, do you also agree to stay? For sure. So everyone is kind of like, we're a pack. We're sticking together. Yes. So in that moment of pack solidarity, uh, there's a shift and stepping out from the gauntlet uh, is this kind of like being of light. Uh, it has the uh, four legs and uh, face of a wolf. And then it has giant wings reminiscent of Jake. Its body is made out of a metal bull uh, reminiscent of Coulter's form. And it has tomes floating about it. And from its mouth drips water and its hind legs seem to be that of some kind of sea creature, uh, generic fish. (laughs) And this creature kind of goes, uh, turns to the pack and howls, and then you guys are all kind of filled with this, this kind of spiritual light, and you watch as the black hardens around, uh, Clay's body, and cracks appear on it light streaming through the cracks and then it explodes out and clay in his human form falls forward unconscious cool as, I bow to this light spirit thing uh as helena you would recognize this as a pack totem Yay! your pack has been chosen by a totem which seems to be a chimeric spirit of some kind Voice for radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Ruby, it is still your turn, though. Okay. Um, I bow to the light creature and then shift into human form and go over to Clay to make sure he's okay. All right, Jack, it is your turn. The frozen spirit is still there. How long does it remain frozen, Mark? Good question. Forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Statue in the woods. <laughs> Until I the think, first, I think it's the scene. Okay. Or unless I like stop it. So uh, inherently, you guys are now out of combat. Um, I will, with that like last turn, pick up more rocks and fling it at the creature. It has zero it. defense, so I mean, right. chances are you'll probably hit it. Clay, are you okay? <laughs> Cradle your little hand right below my bare bosoms. <laughs> am I awake or am I still unconscious? You're very much so unconscious. Four successes. Oh. Four successes. <laughs> um, so that thing is obliterated. You guys are now completely out of combat. Uh, Tiana seems to come to her senses finally, and she's just kind of breathing heavily off to the side. <laughs> I'm going to walk over and I'm going to lick Clay's face in my wolf form. I'll revert to Jack form and run to check on Clay, but keep an eye on Tiana. You are naked because you did not learn the trick of keeping your clothes when you shift yet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> to worry about right now. Too many things to worry about. <laughs> well, they still have some clothes because the clothes they took off. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah. But they're probably I a ways didn't. away, aren't they? <laughs> And I didn't take any clothes off. I know, so I didn't mind totally. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dell has some nice skinny jeans and just a leather jacket. Oh, he's going to be styling. Hell yeah. <laughs> anyway, Coulter, um, looking at uh, Solomon, you he just looks exhausted. Like, he's not medically passed out. He's just sleeping super deep, as if he has zero energy. <laughs> What do I know about pack totems? Like, how should I be treating the one that just came to us? The pack totem is kind of like, so if a pack is blessed by a totem, it makes them like a legit pack. Um, so the pack totem is kind of like a combination of all of your strength. Um, so like, it's probably not particularly potent right now. Like it's already unmanifested because it can only stay manifested oh. for so long. Oh. Um, but whenever you go to the the shadow or the spirit world like your pack totem will like be there with you cool tiana are you okay i pick 
clay up and I'm fireman carrying it. <laughs> yeah, I just never, it was like everything, like every bit of me was in pain at the same time. I'm sorry I let you guys down. I just haven't felt pain like that in a while. <laughs> No, I'm so glad you were here. I'm 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 sorry that you were hurt. To be honest, I'm not really that hurt. It was just the pain and that's gone now. Um what were those? Do I know what those were? <laughs> uh you can make a um wits plus a cult if you wanted to. I'll even give you a plus two because you are a werewolf. I get a chance die though because I go back down to one because I'm unskilled in occult. <laughs> All right, nothing. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. You can draw conclusions that they are similar to the uh, hunger spirits you fought previously and that they were corrupted spirits because they smelled the same as those. But what kind of spirits they were, you're not the, the pack spirit master. It's not your job. <laughs> they seemed like some more corrupted spirits like the ones at the vampire party but I, oh and, and would i think it's weird that they came out of this gauntlet after or does it make sense because they like sense the energy and wanted to feed on it it would make sense for spirits to come through a thinning of the gauntlet but these things immediately turn from the ritual when you appeared so as far as spirits go, they they were they were looking for you. So something sent these things. Yeah, Angel let us know that the spirits at the aquarium were sent by somebody to to take out a task, seemingly a a vampire. So that same somebody seems to have sent these to us. Angel said specifically that a vampire hired was trying to hire someone. So it wasn't necessarily a vampire, but. I wonder if they knew we were here or if they just had them prowling the Hissil. But how would they know we were going to thin an area of the gauntlet here? It's like they're, how do they know these personal things? Well, given your werewolfness, it, I mean, doing the pack ritual the way that you did, it would have sent a ripple through the Hissil. So it could be that they were coming for you and they just zeroed in on you because of the pack ritual. Cool. Is there something I should do to the gauntlet before we leave? Uh, no, it'll, it'll harden back up. I mean, like that's kind of like the side effect of doing a rite like this. So. Um, Clay and Tiana back home. I'll, I'll walk over to my clothes and like, Fain trying to look for him and I'll use hidden reality to make it so that I actually did take off my clothes at the beginning of the ritual so they're not all broken and then I'll put them on <laughs> I don't know what hidden reality does is that something mm -hmm. imagine the world that's not but how it might be and choose one of the differences uh, and make it a reality so I mean it, it fits the criteria well okay <laughs> oh. mm. Okay, so I start walking back. I guess, how did I get out here? I probably ran, so I guess we got to call an Uber. <laughs> uh, start walking back I'm, to where you guys were dropped off. I'm already logged in, if that helps. <laughs> I'm still in the wolf form, but I'm going to grab my jacket and pants, kind of like flip them back up onto my back, and I'm going to walk as far in wolf form as I can. About um, halfway through, about halfway through, the pack ritual wears off, and you're just crawling on hands and feet <laughs> for a second, and then you're like, "Oh!" and you stand up. <laughs> and I stand up, and then I slip my pants on, throw the jacket on, and continue along with the pack. Oh, and I don't have a spare pair of pants, but I was wearing a sweater and a polo. If you want. Oh no! All my clothes are. Are perfectly fine. Oh, okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so 
So, so everyone is basically <laughs> and my polo. <laughs> so everyone is clothed except for underwear, except for Owen, who <laughs> had his underwear. <laughs> well, I put my clothes back on. Same. <laughs> Everyone got to see Owen naked, though. That's new. You guys weren't sure if the clothes were just part of his body or... Very pale. <laughs> Very pale. Because <laughs> none of you have seen him outside of that one, like, yep. suit that he has a million of. <laughs> the more time Dell spends the just one. bare-chesting under the leather jacket, the more he highly considers that to be a daily look. <laughs> Jack felt uncomfortable in an undershirt, so he's happy to have a sweater. <laughs> All right, so you guys talk about anything, or you just wait for the Uber? I mean, what does... We were a pack before, but now we're a pack. What, what changes? Does anything? For the majority, for you guys, nothing much, really. It's more on Ruby's end of things that really changes because, I mean, yeah. But Ruby, you can discuss what changes for you. A lot of it's political. Like, we are seen as an entity now by the other players in, in Chicago. I mean, mainly the other wolf packs, but... You know, there's other supernatural beings that I think would respect our packness. Um, we have a spiritual buddy now. Um, he or she is not super strong yet, but I think we'll be really formidable as we as we grow together. Um, do I do I smell of wolf now? And I kind of sniff under my jacket. I mean, you. You can always do that. So, I right. mean, like, it's really your choice. But. That's, that's, why it's, that's why it's funny that I'm asking, but nobody else would laugh. <laughs> but I think it's important that we took this step because there is some magic to the pack as a whole. I mean, I think every pack has a different edge in that, in that way. Um certain skills that really start to pop out, I guess. We'll see how that goes for us. Um, also, I had a thought and then immediately lost it. Oh, oh, uh, Ruby, uh, due to leading your pack in, you know, this pack ritual and like forming this, uh, you do have the potential to increase your wisdom now. Do I roll for that or are you just you you so you have to earn it in game and then you can spend experience points to make it a reality. Okay. But I'm awarding you uh the potential for a dot of wisdom renown. Cool. Ruby, you're my sister, and I'm glad this brought us much closer. Um, but in the future, if you could please let me know beforehand if anything's going to change my form. Uh, that would be much appreciated. I will. I think I got a little carried away with the mystery and the drama, so I'm sorry. No, it's it's completely fine, and I'm, I'm glad it happened, but please, in the, for the future. Thank you. I was into every moment of it. I wouldn't have changed a thing. <laughs> Jack, Britannica is strangely quiet and he kind of comes forward in your mind and is like, I think I have a better understanding of my purpose. Something deep within whatever it is I am calls out that I am my family and my family is me. <laughs> but I'm not really sure we should seek the counsel of another demon for further clarification. Make this a priority, Jack. Is that safe? We need information. The risks are within acceptable variables. Okay. We, we are the moment. Moment is me. 
how dare you? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I will make a mental note and use the eidetic memory to remember that forever. <laughs> uh, but just so you know, in game's term, that's the truth of your cipher. Got it. Okay. The final truth or the next truth? It's kind of the final truth. Like it's, it, it's there. It, so now you kind of understand like what the truth is. Uh, this pack ritual is something that a demon should have never been able to participate in. But seeing as Ruby welcomed you into this, it let you into a greater mystery than most demons have access to. Okay. You have not realized the final truth, but you understand yeah. that that's what you're working towards. I'm, I'm not. I'm glad that you were uh, able to enjoy that as well. Then, thank you for this opportunity again. Talking to Britannic, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, were you talking to Britannica? Mm -hmm. Oh, that loud? Jack was dead otherwise. So, <laughs> so, well, Dell, how about that drink? Uh... Oh, did you just ask me for a drink? Man, we really don't, are back. Don't make a thing about it, please. Just let's go get a drink. Let's I go. say we go immediately to the abattoir and all have something to drink. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. I deserve a cheat day, and I'm sure I can find somebody willing at the abattoir. <laughs> you probably could. Also, I imagine uh, Ruby and Del both at the same time going, yeah, let's get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Almost in perfect unison. <laughs> if I feel my like coat pocket, uh, is there a napkin there? Or was that gone in the mail? I, I mean, napkin. whatever you would have done with it. Well, because Satan was mailing something. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. I mean... Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, no, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no one has anything else they want to talk about? Just Drink about how long great. the lift is taking to get there. Also, the, this Start one's going to be expensive course. because it's a lift XL, obviously, so. <laughs> Sorry, Ruby. Got it. <laughs> I'll get that. Um, put dollar bills in the bank like Ruby. <laughs> what is everybody's wolf color coat colors? Did did everybody look at their own coats? <laughs> Mine was like a pale, sickly green. It has to be a natural wolf color, buddy. Pale, Aussie. sickly green. <laughs> <laughs> some, some stuff thrown on them. Uh, would like a. Brindle be a wolf color? I'm pretty sure it would be like the blonde, brown, black, gray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I imagine Dell's had to be like as pure white as like Snow Wolf as it as it could be. Oh, you were such a pretty wolf. I oh, mean, yeah. like You're uh, such a pretty wolf. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of a shame that you're just back to your hideous, beautiful human form now. <laughs> Yeah, it's too bad we didn't have time to groom each other. It feels so nice in wolf form. <laughs> Ruby, I have so many questions. You can lick your own genitals, too. Just not that I've done I that. I now suddenly <laughs> have no questions and even more. <laughs> Does that ever happen again? Are we? I, I'm just going to ask. Are we ever going to turn into wolves again? Because if I can like a wolf, and then my wings, if I can. It is cool, isn't it? But no, I don't think so. It's just kind of part of the rare magic of the pack ritual. But I mean, hey, who knows? There's a lot of crazy stuff out there. Okay. 
Dell seems a little bit disappointed at the initial no. I can't believe you're okay. disappointed. You have a much cooler form. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you guys approach the road, uh, be, like you've ordered the car, but it's still like <laughs> so far away. Uh, but as you approach the road, a black explorer is idling there. Alert. Or, Escalade, whatever those really fancy ones that rappers drive. Range Rover. Range Rover. A Mercedes G Wagon, if they're real fancy. Uh, as you approach, the window rolls down and somebody sticks their head out and goes, Which one of you is Solomon? <gasps> He's still unconscious, right? Yeah. I raise my hand. Uh, courtesy car, uh, all it says is your guardian angel. It says, I highly suggest that you use this car to get out of town. Somebody paid the price. Who are you? I'm a guy who drives this car. Oh. I Where admit- are you taking us? that the pickup instructions were weird. It said, give the message and then drive them wherever they want to go. All right. Well, I start putting clay in the, in the trunk, I guess. <laughs> in the back, you know, the back. The trunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to the abattoir. Does that work for you? Uh, perhaps we should get out of town. I don't know if this is, a guardian angel might be angel telling us that someone's trying to kill us. We're two hours south of Milwaukee. In two hours, it'll still be bar hours there. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but some of us can't stay up too late. I mean, I'm sure we can find somewhere dark. What time is it? I mean, it, it was midnight. Safe, safer than our our home? Like maybe, I know we, I don't know if we need to get out of town, but maybe we need to go home. That's where we're safest. If we leave town, where would we go? Be safe or susceptible at home. So it's icky and gross, but I think I could wake Solomon up and ask him his opinion if you guys want. Yeah, he's the one an angel. Also, whatever it is, I want to see it. You really don't. And she kind of uh hey uh owen can i have one of those Uh, like you did during the ritual oh flourish and make a dagger (laughs) subtly subtly because there is a human around (laughs) Uh, flourish subtly (laughs) she drags it uh, across the stupidest place for anyone to ever cut themselves but it's the movie thing she drags it across her palm and kind of like drips into solomon's mouth uh, Solomon, you regret gain a willpower and then you immediately come conscious again, uh, yeah. kind of like adrenaline and like blood coursing through your veins and you feel deeply connected with Tiana. <clears throat> ah, uh, ah, ah. Calm down, calm down. I grab her and like hug her as hard as I've ever hugged anyone. Ever. Okay, okay, this will fade eventually. We just gotta not make a habit of this, or you will become obsessed with me. <laughs> I feel like, I'm, haven't I always been obsessed with you? Shouldn't I be? We have it a gets, question that we have to ask. It gets so much worse from here. We have a time sensitive question fantastic. that we have to ask you. <laughs> what? Angel what was said, your wolf coat color? Huh? <laughs> Ruby. Angel <laughs> said somebody paid the price. And that what would be that? best for you to get out of town. Our what guardian angel mean? said that. What is that? Driver, can you repeat the, the message for us? Uh, somebody who wrote uh, guardian angel, like as the name of who wrote the message, said, feel free to use this car. I highly suggest you use it to get out of town. Somebody paid the price. Okay, so out of character, this is Angel. She's sending this car. 
it's most likely that if someone paid the price, either someone died for it. Or she's gotten the price that she asked for you. Right. I'll use my common sense merit to see if we should go out of town. Oh, we need to go out of town. I oh, or if this car is going to oh, explode okay. because yeah. the assassin sent it. <laughs> go ahead and roll common sense. Yeah! I, I love that merit! <laughs> know how to do that. I'm just looking at my notes. <laughs> Can I use my danger sense merit to sense if the car is going to explode as soon as he puts it in reverse or something? Yeah, it's not going to. It's fine. No, oh, I didn't even have to roll any dice. <laughs> Your danger sense is just that good. I got one success. Um, so, common sense dictates that she took this job, Angel, but she doesn't want to do it. Right. So, there is a window to where if you found out who paid her you might be able to take care of the problem because if she had no client, then there is no job. So someone paid her the price to kill you. Yep. Oh, the hundred percent? No, he's he's eighty two percent. No, I'm eighty. I went down to I'm eighty right now. Oh, oh hunter. Somebody saw the window of a sale. <laughs> What's the ultimate price? Did the person die so that way they that she would kill you? Is that the you, ultimate price? You don't know, Jake. Or are you just in character, like, ruminating? Dell is so confused. At this point, he's kind of just, like, thinking out loud to himself, trying to piece together. So, where am I driving, y'all? <laughs> I mean, I may have a way to track her. Oh, I can track her easily. If we wanted to... It's not about finding her. It's about finding whoever hired her. Hired her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because if you, if Angel is in the room with Solomon right now, she she would kill him. Yeah. Like, that's that's Angel's code. She's we, probably, like, going like, well, I just washed my hair, and I got to right. get caught up on TV. Like, she's taking every reasonable excuse to not kill him, but if she was, if it was an opportunity, she would. <sighs> The thing that we do not go back to Mr. Frosty's until this is handled. Who would want you dead? So many Ian. people. Ben Affleck is the first suspect on my list. I don't think someone from that level of bureaucracy would hire an outside assassin. I think he tried to come and do it himself. I mean, to be honest, given the concilium, they would probably want you to stand trial and execute you. Hmm. Right. I don't suppose there's a way we could hack Angel's like financial records and see where some money came from, is there? <laughs> oh, look at Jack. Angel's smarter than that. <laughs> I don't know if we even have to. I mean, you're an investigator. It seems to me just guessing that the most likely reason somebody would want to kill you would be to stop you from investigating something. What cases have you taken recently? You've only been back in Chicago for a short time. You can't have that large of a pile. It's got to, I mean, one thing you think of is this shadowy figure that I'm supposed to, you know, the, you guys know Tatiana. Oh, Titania? Or Titania, yeah. I mean, oh, we saw her once at the wedding between him and the prince. Right, but if, glamour. if she or Maxwell has found out that I'm supposed to find out information about her. You know, that could be grounds. I I don't know much about Angel, but I I definitely know that we cannot possibly take the Summer Queen in a fight. I don't think we can either. So if it is her, then maybe fleeing is the best option. Um, I'm going to call Hunter. Yellow. Hey, question. Yes, I do. Aww. Huh? Nothing. Um. Don't read anything into this, but if one were to 
let's say I'm playing a hide, game of hide and seek with Angel. Where would I hide? Well, you shouldn't call the guy who's hanging out in our apartment right now. Oh, We're playing Risk, though, so it's going to take a while. If you need me for something, I guess I could quit the game early. Oh, but. no, you guys should play. Uh, you guys should make a tournament out of it, you know, see which different, you know, how you can conquer, you know, better each time. Like someone has a handicap each next time. I need to sleep eventually, babe. Uh, sleep's whatever. But she said that she's not going to do anything else until we finish this game. So, and she has Australia. Well, um, make it make it last, babe. Um, she's playing super defensively. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Um, all right. Well, uh, love you, and uh, talk to you later. Hey, hey, uh, hang on. You want to just talk to him? No, you can't talk to him. Oh, okay. You just want me to tell him? Okay. Um, so apparently, Vampire Daddy is mad at you because you knew more than you let on when he hired you. Oh. Um. So. Get your shit correct or get to Mexico. So, Angel, she is my guiding light and I love her now and forevermore. For some reason, she started cleaning a gun. I. (laughs) (laughs) She says we should get back to the game. You should most definitely get back to that game and uh, have fun. You know, we could get you guys in if you guys want to swing by. We ordered pizza. No, we couldn't impose like that. We uh, we've already got our own little party going on tonight, but we'll uh, we'll make it a group thing next time. Okay. Uh, she said, "Smack Dell on the ass for her, and it'll get you an extra two hours." I don't know what that means. I reach over the seat and smack Dell's ass as hard as I can, so she can hear the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I like it, but give some, give a man some warning first. <laughs> He's like, "All right, gotta go, babe. It's my Bye. turn." Love you. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna assume I have that on speakerphone. Yeah, the driver is very confused. Yeah. <laughs> That's well. I knew that. I should have said something. <laughs> um, the aquarium was open for business. Do we go now? When else do you want to go? Uh, I have a merit for uh, contacts, specifically vampires. Is there anyone I could reach out to to see, to get information, to see like where they're, where Maxwell and his main posse are at? I mean, I, I know where to find them. It's more what they. You could- you could call your contact to see if you couldn't set up like a peaceful meeting. Like I would be down for that. Know. Let's do you that one. That sounds like fashion the- graveling. <laughs> no. Some ways that we don't end up on the battlefront. Yeah. All right. So diplomacy sounds. So nice. Dell, as long as we're uh, in grave peril right now. So uh, you get on Facetime and call Funk. <laughs> oh, don't want this to turn into a ghost story. Uh, Funk is uh, answers. It's FaceTime, but it's like really dim because you know Funk is missing most of his face, um, and he lives. So, that sounds like a skin game. <laughs> and he lives in a sewer. Uh, but he goes like, "Hey, who's the prettiest boy?" Hey, I wish it were you, Funk. That's that's what I was saying. You were supposed to say me, Dell. I'm hoping this guy that's isn't so a dead guy, right? <laughs> It's you. It's you, Funk. I wish it were me. Is what I is what I said. Oh. Anyway, what what can I do for you, bud? Hey, when was the last I'm time? Fresh you out of cocaine, but you're gonna have to impress <laughs> the lady some other way. I take him off speakerphone. <laughs> be one hell of a uh, summer night. Is this guy like a turncoat or something? What? Stop. Hey, Funk. <laughs> question. Sorry. <laughs> I need you to not read into this, but 
When was the last time we talked to Maxwell? Oh, you know Maxwell doesn't talk to the Nosferatu, bud. Right. It's it was a segue question. Um, oh. Is there any way you could set up a meeting with Maxwell? Uh, myself and, and my my pack need to uh, just just hammer some details out. Since when do bartenders hang out in packs? Uh, my friends. All right. Well, I mean, I do <laughs> technically have uh, a standing innova- in, uh, invitation for an issue that I'm supposed to bring to his attention, but I know he's not going to take me seriously, so I haven't really taken it. But, I mean, I guess you could go and and uh, discuss the issue for me. Just to clarify it, my issue i can't discuss your your issues funk no no you go you go with my issue and then he'll ask if you have any other business and then you can bring up your issue you see do you have any other way of (laughs) of contacting him to set up like you know i got love for you funk but it's a big I hate to issue. make it to you, buddy, but I mean if you don't go in with like an official vampire business, he is fully within his rights to kill you and eat you. I hate it when you're right. Which don't is worry. Sometimes. My issue my issue isn't that big. I just ate three frat boys and I left them in a compromising position in a hotel room. I just need to officially apologize and get, you know, forgiven for that. So you just go in, tell him that it was very tastefully done and the pictures were amazing and then go like, I'm sorry. He'll say you're forgiven or he'll sentence me to death and then you can bring up your issue. It's no big deal. It's only three guys. (laughs) Okay, Funk, before... Just before we hammer this out and get it set up, you do realize how sending someone else to apologize on your beat. But you get what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I'm Nosferatu. We do this stuff all the time. People don't like us coming around. <laughs> your words, not mine. Okay. You're the only one who's literally not disgusted when they see my face. Like, you're like the first person who is not, like, vomited or tried to kill me with a torch or said, hey, dude, it was only three girls I roofied. There's no reason to rip off my face when they see me. I mean, we've, we've all, you and I have heard every excuse in the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except they usually think you're pretty and that they try and kill me. There's a difference there, but. Right. And I, God, that shock never gets old. You know what I mean? That like, it, 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 I make that sound effect on the phone. Uh, that never gets old. And I get, we get carried away. We always do this funk. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Hey, hey, hey. I got the, uh, I got that fourth season of Buffy. If you want to come watch it on my, uh, my portable DVD player. Had a great season. They recently power washed my section, so it doesn't smell nearly as bad as usual. That's progress. That's progress. I have to watch it with fun. subtitles because my new my new generator is loud as hell. But I know you're good for it. Bring a frat boy. I. You know what? If I'm going to apologize for you, no more frat boys. Fuck. Say, I won't say kill it. him. I can I can enjoy a frat boy's company without killing him. I say did it, it once. Say it. No more frat boys, period. That's just not fair. You know I have a weakness. I, Funk, you are a weakness. You are one big weakness. Okay. And that's to the human psyche. Mm. Uh, let's, let's, we'll, first off, We're not going to touch Buffy again until after we talk to vampires because the irony of watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I just think it's really, you know, interesting to see that all the vampires are ugly in that world, not just us, you know? Like, there's no pretty vampires. I mean, Angel's pretty, but only when, you know, he's pretending. The rest of the time, he's ugly like like me. And plus, a little self-deprecating humor is always good for the soul. You mean so well. I'll call you tomorrow 
maybe in a couple. I'll call you next week. But dude, we need to talk to to Maxwell. I already said, just go in and say you're speaking for me. You apologize. He either sentenced me to death, in which case I'll just, I don't know, go to Phoenix or something. <laughs> Lots of okay. frat boys there. ASU, man. And they are dumb. So dumb. <laughs> I'll, I'll call you next week, Funk. Okay. Sorry, hey, hey, uh, I was talking to this guy on Grinder. He thinks that I'm like, you know, like a 21 year old twink. And he said something about. Uh, y why W Y A. What does that mean? <laughs> it means where's your ass. Oh, okay. Thanks, bud. You're welcome, Funk. I'll call you next week. Oh, Maybe. let me know if the Prince of Chicago wants to kill me or not. <laughs> It'll be next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I am even if Funk's not done, I hang up the phone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, him and I go way back. Um, you really think you grow past somebody, and then you talk to them, and you, and you your accent changes. Um, I think I, I can know, do before it. Before you took it off speaker, it was going to be a cold days in hell before I got anywhere close to that thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So did you get a meeting, or are we still in grave peril? Oh yeah. my god. I already used that one. <laughs> let's just up, guys, let's just turn up the radio. I'm it sounds like it's some Bowie. So Are you guys done? Are you done? I have, I have one more I could do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. There's a storm front coming, so you guys need to cut it out. But we need to figure out these peace talks. <laughs> Yeah, well, we the started moon, on that one. <laughs> the the full moon is gonna set before too much longer. So, anyway, okay, okay so okay. listen, we have a lot of skin in this game, so let's let's get it done. <laughs> you guys are literally gonna kill Helena. <laughs> Looking at some cold days ahead. Okay, we've all made these jokes before. Let's move on. <laughs> we have blood rights, and we'll be done with the. <laughs> You deadbeat! <laughs> Just a blood red. I'm missing part of my ear now. Thanks. All right. Okay, All right. you did not have to do that. You could have brought animal flesh. You said flesh. <laughs> okay. I'm dedicated. That's twice yeah, now for are. my virtue. Twice, game master. <laughs> Yeah, that that second one definitely refilled all your willpower. <laughs> it's already refilled. You just had to lose I know. A year. <laughs> <laughs> Not a full year, just my ear lobe. Well, and also it wasn't really that big of a sacrifice because when he was in his garu form, it grew back. So. Oh, that's true. Oh, it grows back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> I would think the driver would have said something if we just brought up a guy with no ear. A passed out guy with no ear. <laughs> he's assuming you guys came from some weird drug orgy in the woods, so he's already like he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you tell us that full conversation? Yeah. So I have a question. Can you guys pick a place to go? We'd I like cannot to go to handle <clears throat> any more of the LARP shit. We'd Driver, like to go to the Mr. aquarium, Driver. please. The shed aquarium. <laughs> the shed aquarium, please. They're closed. Yes, we are aware. Okay, whatever. Our dealer's meeting us there. How about that? He starts the car and just uh, puts in headphones. <laughs> um, I have a question. If he, if Dell just tells me that this vampire dude just murdered three dudes, uh-huh. I have to do something about that, don't I? I mean, he's already seeking uh, retribution. Like, okay. Yeah, like he's already right. technically on trial. So okay. All right. And I just want to clarify that that I'm not going to get myself in better in more trouble by ignoring this. I mean, if Maxwell says uh, he's innocent, then you might have to step in. But sure. Mm-mm. But at that point, that's a different beast. And even at that point, you just report to the concilium. It's not your job at all. Right. No, and, it wasn't, and it wasn't technically in Boys Town, so it's not even technically your jurisdiction. So, I would also True. tell Clay that um, a little bit more about like being a nightmare, being a primordial. It's 
he, he, he wasn't like actively killing. He was just terrified. I would be like, oh, no, 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 no. He's a vampire. Funk, Funk is a vampire. He oh, ate Funk is a vampire. I yeah. totally misinterpreted that. No, Funk is a Nosferatu vampire. So he he literally ate those Let's frat boys. I was thinking and Namtaru. They deserved it. They did deserve it because you wouldn't have been involved otherwise. Well, you weren't involved, but you wouldn't associate with him. But he goes after the same people you do. He just eats them. Gotcha. I totally misinterpreted that little section then. Ignore me. Mm-hmm. And then he arranges them in homophobic sculptures for police to find, thus ruining their... <laughs> reputation after their deaths <laughs> oh funk okay right i just gonna reflect on the serial killer's name <laughs> <laughs> well obviously these anyway <laughs> okay so well we're uh, we're doing this thing we're headed to the to the aquarium we sure are okay so um group effort time um what all did i tell maxwell that i knew what i'm trying to i'm trying as a player i'm trying to remember why he feels like i didn't let on um uh well you told him you didn't know anything and technically you don't know anything so you don't know what this is about right that's why i'm confused yeah, that's okay. why you're meeting right, cool. with him. Yeah. Okay. You should be confused. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm getting at. I was like, I don't understand. What did I do? Like, I mean, technically, it could be said that, oh, well, I guess he doesn't know about Tian now. He only knows time. Right. That's why I'm confused because I did lie to him then, but now that that's changed, I haven't actually lied to him. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know that. You don't. And I'm sitting there silently because I can't say anything. <laughs> and he does know Tiana. I mean, Tiana is a vampire, so. Right. Oh, but Do you he think didn't it could be... hire anybody to distance Tiana from anybody. It was no. Tiana. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you think it could be anything related to Tiana, given did you tell him that you had a sister that was a vampire? Oh, no, he knows. He knows I've been hanging out with mages and stuff. Like, he's asked me to report back on all of you. No, no, I just mean, um, Solomon, did you tell him? If he's saying that you lied, is that possibly part of it? Something to do with, something to do with Tiana? I don't think so. I said I know nothing. Like. Why do you think it'd be because of Tiana? I'm just trying to think of what he didn't tell Maxwell if he if Maxwell doesn't think he's coming clean. It's classic baby brother stuff. He's trying to make this my fault because I'm older. Like the oldest is always the one who's at fault. It's just all Jack's doing. <laughs> Boy. Um Can you do an insight on Jack right now? It's like that time that I let Jack eat cereal for dinner, and then as soon as Dad came home, even though he promised he wouldn't say anything, he told Dad, like, immediately, and then I got in trouble somehow. (laughs) That was in the middle of, I don't know, the change of summer 15 years ago. I don't know why that's pertinent right now. It's always pertinent. It's like that time where the twins broke that lamp and then they told dad that I did it and then I had to buy dad a new lamp with my money. <laughs> well, that was a, that was also during the summer. It seems like all of your escapades happened during the summer. Well, that's when we were all home unsupervised, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I do an insight on Jack? Yeah, sure. Empathy, right? Well, okay, so I'm going to stop you right there because what are you trying to get out of Jack? Because if you're trying to determine if he's telling the whole truth, no, no matter what you roll... I'm trying to see why he's bringing up to Tanya. I know that I'm not going to be able to glean the whole truth. Maybe I'm, I'll glean Tiana. it was more. Tiana, sorry. That he's acting weird. Well... Coulter, what information do you want to give his insight check? Because it's technically between the two of you, so I don't know what, you know what I mean? Like, the role here is weird because I can't gauge how much information you would gain because I don't know exactly why he brought Tiana up. 
I, well, I can't say anything directly. So I'm just trying to point a finger in a direction to make them look in that direction to hope that somebody else figures it out. Mm. Since I can't, since I can't actively do anything about it, if I can just like say names long enough, then maybe somebody else will figure something out. <laughs> the only thing you need to be careful of as far as that's concerned, Coulter, is like mm -hmm. if that's your intention, you're technically in breach. Yeah. So it's your because remember it's your intention that also make the pact dangerous. So mm -hmm. um I'd say that as far as like what I was willing to give off, then it would have to be nothing. So you think it's weird, but you don't think anything of it, Mark. <laughs> Anyway, so after a very long uh, car ride where Ruby and uh, Dell just talk about being wolves and how amazing that was the entire time, <laughs> uh, you arrive at the Shed Aquarium and the lights are on. Uh, thank you. This is fine. We can get out here. Uh, it does look pretty condemned, though, because there's, like, wood replacing all the glass that was broken out last time you guys were here, because that was, like, two days ago at most. I hop out of the car. And not say anything to the driver. As soon as you guys are out of the car, the driver drives away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like the front entrance is closed, but we can go in through the kitchen. I know I can get us in. Okay. All right, lead the way. She oh kind of, like, talks to the guard. Uh, and you guys go in through the kitchens, and you're brought before Maxwell, who does not look pleased to see you. <laughs> Sorry, before we go in, I'm casting a spell or walking in. Okay. Um, it doesn't... Uh, like change anything about me it's just i can see is that seeing one howard and Rhode i so i can see everything in a 360 bubble around me as if it was laid flat so okay. it's basically impossible to ambush or surprise me unless there's like darkness or like exceptional camouflage all right vampires uh, are capable of both of those so sure but i'm <laughs> doing whatever i can as um, we're walking in i'm gonna also to reduce i'm sorry Sorry, it reduces penalties due to range cover concealment by three. Okay. Jake? Uh, I was just going to say, I'm going to use family resemblance, almost the opposite effect, and any trace of werewolf gone. Okay. Is there a uh, lot of water still in the aquarium? Uh, probably not. I mean, there's probably some, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's probably giant pipes and reservoirs and stuff. So, like, you'd have access to water pretty easily. You could also just ask for a glass of water as you're going through the kitchens if you really need I it. mean, I have water on me, but I want to know if, like, the Extra tanks water. still have water. Or, like, if there's any tanks in the room that have water in it. They would have to replace the glass on the tanks before they could fill them. So, I would assume no. Okay. At least not in that main room. In the side rooms, the smaller tanks would still be full. Okay. But uh, so you're in front of Maxwell. Yes. This better be good, and you better have official business. Uh, just found out someone put a hit out on me, and I'm trying to figure out. That's not official business. That's personal. Do you have official vampire business? Apologies, we do, and I don't. Um, Funk would like to formally apologize. He could not make it tonight. I, we are here in his stead. And Funk said, and I quote, tell him I'm really sorry. It wasn't too bad. And he'll never do it again, probably. He said he would never do it again? Those words were said. And then words after that were said, sir. Well, he already made a significant contribution to 
a, a personal fund, so I'm inclined to forgive him that trespass. And if there's no further business... Um, I have personal business, if... Uh, get it out with, then. I'm curious if you can tell me anything about the hit that's been placed on my head. You know the qu- the Queen of Summer. I mean, I'm sorry, you know Tanya. I know of Tanya, but I don't actually know her. I've never met her before. No, no. I hired three private detectives, and two of them came back with uh, the original name of Tanya, my wife. You said you knew nothing about her. You grew up with her. I did not grow up with Tanya. You did not grow up with Sapphire Hartsang. What? Um, I'm sorry, can you please repeat that name? Tanya, my loving wife, original name is Sapphire Heart Sang from Monticello, Minnesota, which I believe is where Shut you're from. the fuck up. I will not. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you have an explanation for this? She disappeared when we were children. Um, so you're telling me that of the three private detectives I hired, only one of them didn't realize he had a personal connection to the wife who he has met before? If yeah, I may, I'm really bad at this. If I may, we saw your loving wife at your nuptials, and she didn't look anything like what we remember Sapphire looking like. To be fair, the pictures that were brought forth do not match my wife's current countenance. But does this mean that you haven't even been looking into it? Because the rest of them came back with this information in a much shorter time. Have you been busy? How many days has it been? I think it's been like two, three days. I've been attempting to reestablish connections since I've come back to town. So I apologize if I didn't get to this right away. So you're saying... And his voice takes on a tinny tone as vampire energy starts to course through you, Hank. You can attempt a force of wills if you wish. So I, what does this mean? He's trying to exert some kind of control over you. Oh, yeah. I want to clutch that. Okay. Well, hold on. What? Well, you don't know what he's trying to do, but he's in the midst of asking you a question while he's doing it. So I'm assuming this is happening before. Do I know if it's better to wait to see what he asks before I try to fight it or do I? So he's either going to make you admit to something that he's going to change whatever your answer would be, or he's trying to determine if you're being honest. It's either a zone of truth or a dominate. I'm going to fight it. So what do I do? Uh, So... It's going to be your potency plus your uh, composure. Can I do a willpower? You can. Just so you know, he just got an exceptional success, so. Yay! Oh, no. (laughs) I got one success. And also in the future, keep in mind, you can also spend a willpower to just add two to your composure. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we talked about it in me in eventually. And you can add it. We didn't do add it to our defense. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll okay, do so it eventually. <laughs> I got one success, but he got an exceptional, so. So you are racked and you cannot not to tell the truth. Oh, okay. At least it was only a zone of truth. Okay. As he goes, so you're telling me, and then in his vampire voice, that you had no prior knowledge as to the identity of my wife when I hired you. I did not know that she was Sapphire Heart Sang. Uh, do you know how hard it's going to be to call off the assassin? I went out of my way 
to hire the best. And she is right now stalking you, I am sure. I and pull out I'm my have phone to try and-, and I call Hunter. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, you can't use your cell phone in the middle of an official meeting. It'll be just a moment. Hmm. Hello? Hi, can you put Angel on? Uh, I'll do this. Only if you promise not to put on Solomon. Uh, no, of course not. It, it's, a, it's a call specifically for her from another party. All right, she's asking for the phone. Hello? Uh, Angel, just a moment. Uh, Maxwell. Oh, it's hand the phone zero. Over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now you can talk to yourself. <laughs> Hello? Oh, the, this is rather convenient. I just needed to call you, actually. I know I, I, I know I promised that I would pay for Solomon's head, but it turns out that I may have been overzealous, and to avoid any problems with the concilium, I, I would like to cancel. Oh, oh. You haven't... Oh, okay. Understandable. A cancellation fee. Uh, um, I, I'm assuming that we will split it. I'll contribute. Solomon. Um, I'm sorry? We'll split the cancellation fee? We'll split the cancellation Of course. Fee. Yes, yes. I'll put my well, on I, I, I will split the cancellation fee, fee with Solomon. Oh, that seems rather one side. Oh, I understood. Understood. Um, it's it's been a pleasure. Um, no, I, I don't need to speak with a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she hung up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the the code. I'll, I, thank you. Just oh. <laughs> I'll um, back in my pocket. <laughs> Did she refer to you by a number, Maxwell? If she did, what would that number be? I would never disclose that information to a potential enemy. <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell Funk that he is forgiven. Yes. But also tell him that the next time he comes to court, he needs to wear a paper bag. I find his face disgusting. You know, don't we all? Mm. Yes, just tell him that's a condition of <laughs> his forgiveness. Now, we all have egg on our face, and I don't wish to drag this out. I bow to him and say thank you for meeting with us. But now you will tell me everything you know about Sapphire Hartsang. Any known associates, family members, you will tell me now, and it will be forgiven. She okay? Yes, she's fine. She's she still hasn't moved into my loft. She insists that she needs her own space, and she hates the blacked out windows. But who knew burying a human would be so frustrating? You know, you just think the do what you say, but she seems strangely resistant to my charms. Do you um, know a way I we could contact her? Why would you need to contact her? Well, she was my sister. I haven't seen her since I was a kid. You are Sapphire's sister, a werewolf. Does that mean she's also wolf-blooded? That would explain the resistance to my charms. Yes, yes, interesting. I assume I could set up a lunch date, but it would be up to her. If you haven't seen her in some time, there's chances she does not wish to see you. Is that understood? I understand. I, I appreciate you talking to her for me. I'll have her send a messenger. Any more information? She disappeared when you were young. In fact, and we lost all memory of her for many years. How is that possible? Hmm. Well, uh, your I mean, subject... Uh, your subject, Tiana, was very close with her growing up. Is this true, Tiana? Uh, thanks, buddy. Um, little brother, love of my life. 
would upset dad super much if I killed. Um, <laughs> dad, calm it down, sis. Yeah, so when we were 16, um, she got it in her head to run off with this man. And she did that. And that's all I really remember. I, I, I remember being close with her and and she just ran away. That's, that's all I really know, Your Majesty. Hmm. Well, Solomon, I feel like we can both agree that I will not be paying you. Fair enough. If there's nothing further... May I ask one question, my lord? You've already asked one question. You may tell your question to one of your comrades who have not asked a question, and then I will answer it for them. It sounds annoying, but it makes me happy. Fair enough. I go to Owen... Can you ask him if he the name Trigardis means anything to him? Dearest Prince, does the name Trigardis mean anything to you? Where did you come across that name? Oh, may I keep speaking to you, even though I didn't answer the ask the question? Or no one's talking to you. <laughs> We encountered a Trigardis uh, as children when we do have memories of Sapphire. The Pythoness speaks of Trigardis. She was turned a long time ago, but she was my grandsire, so I have some of her writings. Trigardis was a goddess in ancient Sumeria who was stricken from their religious record. So unless you knew someone who was alive at the time, you should have no knowledge of that name. She enacted a, as far as our memory serve, uh, command over Sapphire for a time. When she, touched, uh, when she touched the mortal plane. I am in no way an expert, but the stories do not speak anything of mind control. She literally created dolls out of her body. So if this was the case, Sapphire would not be human. And I can assure you, she is. Very, very human. Well then, perhaps our memories are misinformed. Would you... Clearly, you have trouble with your memory. If we want Someone to... should stop your friend from speaking again. I'm still upset with him. I bow and move to the back of the group. <laughs> Do you whisper to one of the other group whatever question you had? No, no. <laughs> I mean, it seems like we can ask for you if you... Uh, ask him who we could if there's anyone else we could talk to who might know anything about Trigardis. He mentioned his sire, people in his lineage. Uh, you said that the Pythoness was turned long ago. Does that mean she's no longer with us? No, she sleeps the great sleep. Meaning she will eventually return, but she is in a period of inactiveness. I have never met her myself. I just have her notes and stories. Is there a way that we may be able to um, peruse the stories as though, or particularly just those that regard regard us? You would have to head to the old world. That is where they are kept. They are too fragile to be shipped to the Americas. But if you ever find yourself in the Fertile Crescent, I could make the arrangements. That is very kind of you. Thank you. I am very magnanimous today. <laughs> Awkward pauses aside, if there's nothing else. <laughs> Thank you again. For You're all welcome. Of it, really. <laughs> Well, it would have caused problems with the Concilium if they had found out that I killed one of their own for no reason. 
And we wouldn't and want to cause problems with Sapphire if she was upset by the loss of a childhood friend. Yes, I am also concerned about that because she would totally find out somehow. Thank you, sir. I start leaving. <laughs> Follow Ruby. Bowing out. Yep, I'm bowing out. Uh, walk away. What's next on the agenda, kiddos? <laughs> See, Tiana, it was fine. He wasn't even upset about it. Oh, he was really upset. He's going to try and kill Clay again, but he's just going to be more subtle. I mean, probably, but that's how I kind of have to live my life, you know? At least that's something future us has to worry about. Yeah, future us. Some of us, like, have to swear fealty to the guy. No, I, mean, I, I guess. <laughs> You're probably Del. the reason he was so nice to us. It's okay. I think I could take him in a fight. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah, but like, what does everybody think his number from Angel was? Well, just let it go. You just wanted to know if his number was higher than yours. I mean, she smacked my ass. I need to know where I stand versus... <laughs> no, no. I smacked your ass for her. Right. Just to clarify. Right. And okay. boy, you did. And I kind of rubbed my butt a little. <laughs> Never mind. So, wait, you haven't slept with Angel? Me? Oh, she's talking to Dell. Oh, I was like, no. <laughs> no. I could have, but someone, not me, shifted into a werewolf and dove into into my ever closing window of opportunity and don't la don't blame your lack of big dick energy on ruby okay <laughs> <laughs> <Quicker>. <laughs> i just did my best <laughs> i didn't bag her either so here we are however yeah, but, but open, you could have <laughs> however open my jacket was i zip it open a little bit more <laughs> All right. Calm down. <laughs> so, so <laughs> what now? What time is it? Sleep. Yeah, it is really close to sunrise, but I'm not that worried about it because we're in a park. So, weren't we all going to go get a drink? Well, I mean, you guys can. I should probably head back to my hidey hole. Should we head back to the apartment and get a drink there? Probably for the best. I doubt That's these are open right now. I mean, there's always a 24-hour liquor store. Drink <laughs> <laughs> outside in the parking lot? <laughs> I mean, there's usually a drunk in an alleyway, so I'd be good. <laughs> I think oh, there's, there's plenty available at the apartment. Yeah, home has my slippers. <laughs> Yay, rats again. Yay. <laughs> we can ask the front desk for something for you. Doesn't that seem amoral? I thought the entire deal was me being as human as possible and not eating people, and that's how I get to stay in the family. That wasn't. Then deal. why are you telling us that you're going to go find someone in an alleyway? I was making a joke. Be funny. Huh. Oh, huh. pot kettle also black. <laughs> I liked the joke, but not wrong. Thank you. Jack, who may or may not be an angel from heaven, agrees with me. <laughs> I really need a drink. Like, really need a drink. We have a full stocked bar at home. Let's just and we, go home. Yeah. And we're back to my original. <laughs> Flash forward. <laughs> we're go um, yeah, we're heading home. All right, you arrive at home. Immediate to our in-house mini bar. Oh, it's not mini. <laughs> drink, please. It's not a, a full size bar. I can't slide drinks all the way down it, but actually, maybe it is. Yeah, you're right. 
it provides everything we need, right? Yeah. It's a custom well, house, yeah. You've 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 anchored it now, so if it didn't have that before, you couldn't have it, but you could say that you had it before. I would have had that before because I like big kitchens, so yeah, it probably would have been and I like to entertain, so probably would have. Uh, I'm gonna just immediately very stiff drink for Solomon, and I'm gonna slide it to the. I don't even ask what's in it. I just toss it down. Oh, I'll, I'll take one. Absolutely. Yes, please. Start mixing mixing drinks for everybody. Uh, none for me, thanks. <laughs> I make a bloody mary, but like not no blood, no people. No Mary. Like a strictly alcoholic Bloody Mary. Yeah, and I, I can't slide it. <laughs> and as I start uh, to drink my drink, I laugh into my cup. <laughs> I will I take the Bloody Mary from in front of her and set it down and pull a can of tomato juice out of my pocket and set it in front of her. I can't <laughs> drink this either. Really? She in frustration walks over to her hutch throws open the thing comes back out with two like kind of struggling rats cuts them squeezes them into a cup and then drinks that in front of everybody <laughs> oh i'm sorry i thought it was the alcohol i didn't realize it was the tomatoes i i don't like to pee <laughs> okay I pour a very stiff drink again for Solomon and myself. <laughs> I'm fine, but why not? Anybody she else? Flicks, she flicks a dead rat at Dell's face. <laughs> <laughs> Did I roll dexterity or something to avoid it? No, she hits you. <laughs> <laughs> it's too fast for the ITC. <laughs> I just reach over the bar, pull out one of the bottles and go sit on the couch. <laughs> to our pack. I just kind of like generally salute everybody. I to read the, this is my glass. To hey, Ruby. Do, are, are your moms in your pack or are they still in the old pack? They're in the old pack. In fact, I technically wasn't in the old pack when I reached maturity. Ugh, no thanks. <laughs> Speaking of Maybe you should tell them about, you know, your sister who exists all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Stuff's still kind of processing. There's been a lot of things tonight, but yeah. Speaking of, who is trying to kill us? I mean, the first time it was a coincidence, but the second time they were trying to kill us, right? Those weird glass things. That's what I think. Oh, and the prince tried to kill Solomon. So, I mean, that's twice in one night. Well, I mean, it logically serves that without too much error, it's the same person that was there to kill a vampire noble. They use the same method. I mean, an unusual is method. It, isn't it pretty easy to just summon stuff? Couldn't anybody do that? Start laughing hysterically. They didn't just summon stuff, though. They summoned the same stuff. No, they were different. The first ones were gooey. These ones were pointy. I mean, the gooey ones were also pointy, but more in a blender kind of way. They seemed very connected to me, but I could be misinterpreting. They smelled the same for sure. I don't know. I need to go to the bed. Percentage of difference between those two is negligible. All right. I mean, I guess we should go to bed. Hey, Jack, uh, I have a cot that I use for guests in my room if you don't want to sleep on the, the couch. How do I get up here? Okay. Good night. <laughs> or morning. morning. Good night, morning. Throw him back another. So does everybody go to bed? Does anyone have anything they want to do before we move on? 
I just got to sit up Padishag myself for a while. That's all. <laughs> I'm going to cast a spell and make sure I don't wake up until I want to. Uh, so, Jack, as you um, sit there gently sipping, uh, you see another vision of the child you uh, kind of sitting across from you. And it looks at you and goes, this is going to be so much fun. For one of us. As he fades away already. <laughs> what does it mean? And we'll end there for the night. <laughs> <sighs> Oof. Thanks, everybody. We will, yeah, uh, outro. <laughs> <laughs> we will come up with the tagline. Eventually. Eventually. With Helena and Rio. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>